I'm in Ireland. That's Ireland in Bedfordshire, in fact, only a few minutes uh, ride from the county town of Bedford. I'm on my uh, Royal Enfield single cylinder thumper, a motorcycle ideally suited to this uh, type of riding along country lanes. You might need a larger capacity multi-cylinder bike with more power for the motorways or just, or just to keep up with modern traffic on any A road. Um, but that doesn't appeal to me. I'd rather use maps to follow the minor roads. And for me, this vehicle is ideal for pottering about country lanes such as these. Of course, I might be saying that because you own a Harley Davidson and I own a much smaller bike. Who knows? But nevertheless, I think there is a case to be made for a small motorbike, for small roads. The added advantage of my uh, uh, small, relatively light motorcycle is that if ever I want to pause, get the sandwiches out, open the flask of coffee in any field gate entrance, I know that at least I shouldn't have too much trouble getting the bike back on the tarmac when I've finished. We're just about to pass under this old railway bridge, which these days carries a disused railway line that once connected Shefford and other towns down the line with the county town of Bedford. Another thing about my riding is that I like to have a target, I like to have a mission, a place to visit. That might be a town, a village, a place of interest, a building of interest. In other words, I don't just ride to, quote, put a smile on my face, unquote, like many of the press release reading pundits always say about motorcycles they're testing. There are many cheaper ways to put a smile on your face. I think a motorcycle is there and is chosen and is owned because it's the best way to travel, the best way to get about and see places. And the object of my journey today is a village, a delightful place called Old Warden. A little village between Bedford and Shefford. What will strike you at once about Old Warden is the well-kept appearance of it. And there's the sign. We're in Old Warden officially. In fact the whole village might have almost come out of a toy box was in fact largely rebuilt as a model village in the 19th century by one Lord Ongley, whose family held some of the manor lands here until 1877. They used formerly to own the manor park and country house, but the present house is a later one, actually constructed in the 19th century, on the same site as the old country house, the old stately home you might say, and it was built by the Shuttleworth factory and their crest, a hand holding a shuttle, may be seen on many of the cottages in the village. 
A son of the house, Richard Ormond Shuttleworth, was killed in the RAF in the Second World War. And in his memory, his mother put the whole property into a trust to be used as a college where under almost ideal conditions it could be used as a training place for agriculture and forestry together with aviation. Now these days the college or rather the uh, the old house and its grounds are better known as the Shuttleworth Collection, wherein is stored a collection of old aeroplanes, very old aeroplanes in fact, cars, motorcycles and other machinery uh, that came out of an original collection of Richard Shuttleworth himself. But today, because of the Covid business, that's uh, not open. So I'm going to turn up here along this cutting into the hillside, an old Holloway worn down over centuries of use, to visit the old Abbey Church of St Le Leonard's. Looks like one or two people are here before me, most likely to enjoy the good walking country hereabouts. I'll put the bike down anyway and uh, take a walk over to the old Abbey Church founded in the 1100s and it uh, was in existence until of course Henry VIII decided it shouldn't be. There it is. Today's parish church of Old Warden, formerly belonging to the Cistercian Abbey of Old Warden. Let's uh, walk over there and take a look. There's some Norman work in the lower part of the tower and that south porch uh, was erected in memory of Richard Shuttleworth with words in Latin on its frontage meaning here the faster life. That building in the corner is the old mausoleum of the Ongli family. And there we have a very ancient old yew tree, typical of a churchyard of this type. That rendered building at the back of the church was built to contain a huge new organ installed in the 19th century. The church is predominantly built of brown stone cobbles with limestone facings, although extensive portions have been restored using red bricks. The result is a jumbled up patchwork of partial restorations and alterations over the centuries. It's as though nobody could care less about restoring to an original authenticity, and as a result, the patchwork has has just uh, grown its own authenticity and is a delight for the mixture. The tower is in four stages and images from the beginning of the 20th century show the tower rent, show it rendered in cement and covered in ivy as indeed was much of the church. The tower now stands in its original glory but is still in need of constant I lingered a while at the church and enjoyed the interior too, which unfortunately was a little too dark to film properly. And so, back to the bike. 